All right, joining us right now is Democratic Congressman Adam Smith of Washington. He is the top Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to get to Ukraine in a second, but first, have you heard anything about this unfolding situation that we're covering right now of an American in, cust in North Korean custody after crossing over the demarcation line? No more than what you've reported, but obviously it's a huge diplomatic problem. You know, trying to figure out why he went across the border is going to be, be step one, but regardless of why, uh, this creates a significant diplomatic problem between North Korea and the U.S., and as has been noted, we have not been in communication. So first step is going to be reestablishing those communications, but if a, you know, a U.S. soldier is in North Korean custody, we need to do what we can to get him back. Do you, is it your understanding, I'm not sure if you've yet been briefed, obviously it's unfolding as we speak, that it is a U.S. soldier, the, our reporting is it's believed to be. I'm just saying kind of if you've gotten any granular detail on that. I, I have not. That's what I've seen reported. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so much more to come on that, and I would love to get your take once you do have, have the briefing on this. Um, but I do, uh, back to Ukraine. The Kerch Bridge attacked. Ukraine claims responsibility. Russia now retaliating. What do you see in this slow slog of this counteroffensive so far and in this moment? That's a very difficult situation. I mean, Russia has, has taken territory from Ukraine. Ukraine's trying to get it back. But Russia's been dug in for a year now, and they have you know, really destroyed the territory that they've taken over. There are mines everywhere. There are tank traps everywhere. It's going to be difficult for Ukraine to retake it. What Ukraine's trying to do in attacking the bridge is break off supply lines, limit the ability of Russia to resupply um, their, their um, soldiers who are on that front line. But this is a very difficult situation. It also points up what Russia is doing and how it's impacting the world. Uh, it impacts, as you reported, the food going to the world, and now Russia's cut off the grain coming out of Ukraine. It's imperative that the rest of the world, China as well, put pressure on Russia to, to stop this war and, at a minimum, allow the world to be fed, allow the grain to come out of Ukraine. I, I hope this wakes the rest of the world up a little bit to just what Russia is doing and how devastating it is, not just for Ukraine, but for the rest of the world. You previously said that if U.S. cluster munitions could bring the war to a conclusion sooner, that you would be supportive of sending it to Ukraine. We know that the, that the munitions have been sent to Ukraine. Do you think these bombs will have that impact of turning the tide? Well, actually, two things. One, yes, obviously, if it can bring the war to a conclusion sooner, that's good. But even if it just allows Ukraine to continue to defend itself, that, too, is a positive. And the bottom line is we have been running out of excess munition for Ukraine. This is what we had in order to allow them, A, to continue to defend themselves, because the attack isn't over, as we've seen in Odessa. The Russians continue to attack all across Ukraine. Ukraine needs to be in a position to defend itself, but also Russia is brutally occupying significant portions of sovereign Ukraine. These munitions are going to be critical in giving the Ukrainians a chance to get their territory back and end this war. On the role of Congress in all of this, the NDAA, the massive defense policy and funding bill, you co-authored the original bill coming out of committee. Um, we now know that it, it, a very a different and modified and amended version passed through on a, very, on a partisan basis um, through the House. Now the process will continue, as you well know and many of our viewers do. Senate will, do, will work its will, and this, is, this eventually is likely then to get hashed out in conference, in conference committee. Even though this bill came out of committee with bipartisan support, where you are now in this divided partisan Congress, do you see a chance that this is a year when Condra Congress actually fails to pass the NDAA? There's absolutely that risk. Look, you're right. This bill's going to change. The Senate is passing their version this week or next, as I understand it. We'll go into conference committee. What the Republicans passed off the floor will not pass. The only question is the, the extreme right-wing Republicans who put in the language that you know, attacks a woman's right to reproductive health care, that goes after the ability to have a truly diverse and representative military, that goes after the trans community. When we take those provisions out, will the House Republicans allow the bill to come back to the floor? Will Kevin McCarthy go with the overwhelming majority of the House? Or will he go with those couple dozen right-wing extremists who took the process hostage? Look, you strip that stuff out, 
We've got 360, 370 votes for this bill. Uh, Mike Rogers, chairman of the committee, said as much, and so did I. We have a strong bipartisan bill. Kevin McCarthy's allowed it to be hijacked by these extremists who really have a very, very bigoted agenda here, driving trans people out of the military, driving women to a position where they can't get the health care they need. We'll make it less likely for women to serve in the military. This undermines our national security simply to advance a right-wing, quote-unquote, anti-woke agenda. I hope that when we get a conference report, Kevin McCarthy stands up to that and chooses a different path, but I can't say I'm sure of that. Hmm. Let's see what happens in the coming months on that one. Congressman, Ranking Member, thank you so much.